today we're gonna take a look at the Creality CR10 V3. When I'm showing you how I'm taking it out of the box and setting it up to run its first prints, I quickly want to talk about some features of the machine and what's it all about. The Creality CR10 V3 is the successor of the well-known and famous CR10 which came to the market and blew everyone's mind because of its print quality. And he is also the successor of the V2. What is special about this printer? Well, it has a large build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. It features a direct drive E3D Titan extruder, which is really curious and which made me actually buy this printer. It also has silent stepper drivers and is BL touch ready. So the printer does not have auto bed leveling but it has a mount and also a plug to connect a BL touch. As you might have seen, the assembly was rather simple and also rather fast. The machine comes pre-assembled and well packed and the assembly took around 30 minutes. After assembling the machine, I of course ran the first test prints. The test prints which were on the machine actually ran quite well. It was really weird that the filament which came with the printer was actually quite brittle and it also only needed 45 degrees on the glass bed but it actually stick quite well to the glass bed. And this leads me to the first point of this machine. During the second print I want to make with this filament which was sent with the printer the filament actually started snapping off and yeah it was basically unprintable. So this cheap white filament, I don't know what band it is, probably some household quality or no name PLA. Well, it will be tossed into the bin. And I would say this is one point on the con list. After making the first prints on the machine, starting with the white filament, which then had to be changed to Prusament PLA Galaxy Silver, I was quite satisf satisfied with the first results of the machine. I then wanted to slice my own models and with the models on the SD or USB drive um, there was a slicer included. It's called Creative Slicer version 1.2.3 and after some googling I already discovered that this is based on a very old and outdated version of Cura. Rather than simply installing another slicer um, I gave it a go and checked for a profile for the CR10 V3 and well there actually wasn't uh, a profile for him specifically or for this machine so I went with the default settings for the CR10 and wanted to try to give it a go. Well the outcome was I would say okay um, as you might see on this banshee but you can definitely see some cooling issues and some yeah, printing errors. And this is due to the fact that the default settings for the KRT machines or for the CR10 includes 6mm retraction, which is way too high for a direct drive printer. And also the fans were really only running at 50% of their fan speed, which is significantly too low. So generally cooling on this machine is not an issue. But, well, their slicer, yeah, personally I don't like it, it's outdated. Some people might like them because it's really simplified, but yeah, I was quickly searching for another option. It was not that hard finding a slicer for this machine. You could either go with Cura, which personally I don't use. I try to use one slicer on every machine that I have, so I went with Booster Slicer. And first of all, I thought I have to tinker out my own profile. And then I was actually quite surprised that there's a ready to um, print profile in Prusa Slicer for the Creality Zero 10 V3, which actually <laughs> prints quite good, has the right protection settings and all, 
the benefits and features of the current version of uh, Prusa Slicer. And well, that was really easy. I just sliced my model and started printing. The first prints I of course made were benchies um, to verify that the machine does not have any cooling issues and surprise surprise it doesn't have them. It has double fans or double fan shrouds at least and the cooling is actually quite optimal. So the first benchies I made they came out nearly perfect really. I, there's nothing to, to nag about, there are no issues on this machine. Sticking on the glass bed was really good, retraction perfectly and no wobble at all. So I was really satisfied with the machine and also honestly I was quite surprised. So what do you do when you have a machine sitting around with 300 by 300 and 400 millimeters build volume? Well you try to go big and that was my second print which I did in vase mode. This is my I think it's called Slim Twisted Starways, which I uploaded on uh, prusaprinters.org and again, in it printed out really beautiful. I think I printed it out in maximum layer height, it's 0 0.2 um, millimeters in Prusa Slicer and the only thing I would, yeah, find not so great are these um, seam lines here. They are sticking out really, yeah, obviously, but I think it's a small point. This can be tweaked a little bit. Overall, as said, this print is really nice. I also printed this low poly bunny for Easter for my wife. And it also was printed in Prusa Mint PLA Galaxy Silver. And again, I have nothing, really nothing to complain about. The print is just perfect. It has the same quality which I would expect from my Prusa printers and at this point I was really stoked about the quality of the machine. I also printed my Valorant Primax in uh, Eastern PLA Plus gold and the handle in the purple one. Again I had no issues. Slicing was perfectly, bed adhesion was really perfect. I also really like the rough texture which the bed leaves on the prints and the prints actually pop off the build plate once the build plate has been cooled. You now have seen some of the features of the machine and also some of my early prints. I have the machine now for two weeks and I will continue to test the machine to push its limits. Also try out different uh, filament like PETG. I personally print a lot on PETG and I have no experience how the PEG will stick to the glass bed. So this will be covered in another video. I think to notice also is that the machine also comes with quite some tools and Allen wrenches and stuff like that. Um, me, for me personally it's really cool because I don't have one of these flush cutters and I was searching um, around everywhere but I didn't want to order only this one. Um, now I have one, it came with the machine and I'm really happy. Now I want to give you a little bit of a deeper insight in the machine and also honestly I want to talk about some cons of the machine. The first issue of the machine definitely is that the fans which are included in the control box and also on the hot end, they are quite loud. While the machine has signed stepper drivers, the machine itself, if you turn it on, It's not that loud, it's not that noisy. If you close the door, you cannot hear the machine, but it definitely is louder than a Prusa i3 Mark III. It probably has around the same noise level as the Mark II, which don't, didn't have a Noctua fan. Another issue also is, well, these control boxes with these old rotary knobs, I think they should be a thing of the past. For new machines, I would really like a touch screen. For me personally it's not a big downside. They are easy to control. The interface is well known but as said yeah for a new machine you kind of are looking for current technologies or for yeah current state of the art for this control interface. It's not a big downside that this slicer actually is outdated. 
because there are alternatives but for uh, new people or for beginners it's not the biggest uh, and best thing um, to have a really bad slicer because the first experience is significantly worse than if you start with a fully set up and ready to made or ready to print profile definitely. I still think that this machine probably isn't a beginner's machine, it's more like a machine for a intermediate who wants to upgrade from his Ender 3, who wants to print bigger things like helmets and stuff. So they probably have experience with a slicer. In that regard it's a small issue, um, but still I think Creality, yeah, they should make a profile for the machine actually and ship it out with the machine. It just makes no sense to not include it. As said, the filament sample also was kind of old and brittle. Um, either you have like a well-packed or a better filament, which actually handles shipping from China maybe. Um, maybe it was frozen, I don't know. Um, but again, not a good experience if you can only make a small print and then you have to throw away all the filament. Another point is also that this machine does not have auto bed leveling. Other machines like the Pro version, um, of the CR10, they already have a BL touch, by the, but they are a little bit ex more expensive than these machines. Um, as said, I didn't had any issues so far with bed leveling. I leveled the bed only once and made all the prints, um, and they were all successful. I have no deviations over the print surface, so not an issue for me. But again, as the price tag we will talk about later is quite high, um, I would also say. A PL touch could be included. And then I have some smaller issues which I think I will have a look at them later in a full review. The first point is, well this cable management is just, it's just a mess. There are wires um, dangling around everywhere and because the control box is separate you also have a lot of wires in the background. Well it's not a big issue, I just don't like it. Also the filament sensor which sits on top of the X gantry or on this crossbar, it has a little bit of an issue. Um, while feeding filament into the filament sensor, um, it actually can scrap on the surface and create some abrasion inside of the filament sensor. I already spoiled this on the first two prints, so I already made a adapter which goes on top of the filament sensor with a ball bearing and in that way the filament is fed straightly into the filament sensor. It also helps me a little bit in feeding the filament to the sensor and also here on the top you can see that the um, XGNG goes all the way to the top and it actually doesn't have a software limit so it crashes into these stabilizing rods and it can bend which kind of, I don't know, is a failure. Um, because all, the whole hot end will be tilted. I experienced this like five minutes into the machine because I wanted to level the X gantry and I thought okay if they put them here and something can uh, actually crash probably a software limit would be appropriate. Another small issue I already have is I have abrasion on the x-axis and on the y-axis on these V-rollers. So I definitely will have an eye on that and I think after some time and I'm talking about weeks or some months, which is not a big time for a 3D printer, I will have to change them to uh, polycarbonate wheels probably. As said, I don't know yet, but there's a lot of flex and stuff around there. Um, I will cover this point more deeply in a full review. These were actually quite some con points on my list. I wasn't really aware of them when I was writing them down. But don't get me wrong at this point, I really like the machine. In general I just think that the manufacturer can put a little bit more effort into the machine. I think they already have a yeah quite suitable um, manual when you want to assemble it. They yeah improved the machine from the CR10, from the CR10 V3. A V2. They probably learned already some stuff. The hardware is really good. It's just 
the icing on the cake which is really missing. So don't get me wrong, the machine is really good. So let's talk about the price tag. Well, here in Germany you can get it around 420 to 450 euros. Um, you can get it around 500 to 550 uh, dollar from Gearbest, Banggood, somewhere and ship it uh, probably anywhere, anywhere in the world. So the price tag compared to a Ender 3, for example, is quite high. If you directly compare it to a machine like the Arturo Lee Sidewinder, it also is significantly uh, more expensive. But why is that probably the thing? Well, this machine has a E3D hot end and I think the hot end besides mainboard and overall design of the machine is one of the key points of a printer. And personally, if you probably have seen the video about the Sidewinder, I had a lot of issues on the Sidewinder um, regarding the extruder and my purchase choice or my thoughts behind this purchase were to get a reliable machine. I personally like direct drive extruders. I don't like Bowden so much. I also don't have so many experience with Bowden extruders. So kind of my preferences or my thoughts which led me to buying this machine. So this is not a sponsored review. I just bought this machine to go bigger in prints. I want to print these bigger props. I want to print helmets on this. I was limited to printing on my Prusa Mark 3S, Mark 2S, which can go up to 210, but I already had to split a lot of models. And so far the machine has really impressed me. To sum it up, my first impressions, I have this printer for around two weeks. I probably have around 30 hours printing time in total on this printer. It's not that much. As said, I will run this machine for another month or two and then give you a full review about the machine, about the pro or pros, about the cons, which is issues I probably ran into. I don't know them yet. Um, so far, I'm impressed. As said, it's not a beginner's machine, as I would directly call it. It's on the intermediate level. You have to know what to do and what to expect. The price tag isn't the cheapest on this machine, but it prints really well out of the box. And this is one of the main things I was looking for. I don't want too much fiddling around with these printers. Other people enjoy that, but I don't do that. I want workhorses and this machine is really promising in that regards. I hope you liked this video and found the information I wanted to give you interesting. If so, then also leave me a comment. I will try to link all of the models in the description below. You can also subscribe to my channel and leave me a like on this video. That's it for today. I want to thank you for watching. Have a nice day and goodbye.